Hi, my name is Bogdan. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to make a web service request using action form, passing uh, form data, and then parsing the response and displaying it on the front end. So I will follow through an example on W3 schools. There is a service here that converts uh, from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So we'll use their service and we'll build a form that has a, a text input with the Celsius degrees and we're going to call this web service and then display the uh, response on the front end. So I'll start by creating a new form. I will start with a blank form. And here I will add my text field. I'll actually make it a number. I'll call it Celsius. And then I will add a button that sends this to the web service. And I will call this button convert. And in this button I will add a new action. It's called server request. Note that it was called post data in older versions, so you need to make sure that you have uh, 3.1.38 or 0.39. This actually that uh, we're looking now is 39. And then I'll add a server request. And here you can choose uh, the URL where to make the request and some to upload some data and uh, we're going to also store the response. So I'll go back to W3Schools, to this Celsius to Fahrenheit service, and I will uh, use SOAP 1.1. There's also a SOAP 1.2, and I'll show you this in a few. So first thing, I need uh, the URL to the web service, and the URL is this host plus this uh, relative URL. So I need to combine these two in the URL field. And don't forget the HTTP. Next, <coughs> uh, we look what data we need to upload. So basically we need to send this XML to the server. And this is how SOAP communicates. The client sends an XML to the server and the XML contains some uh, variables and then the server will, res will respond back with another XML that contains the response. So we're, we're gonna just send this XML, but here where it says Celsius, we'll put a token, which is the name of the Celsius text box and it will get replaced with the actual va value that was submitted in this field. So I'll just grab it with copy paste to make sure I don't have a, a typing error. Now next we need to add some headers. So if you go back, we go back and look at the service, we see that it has content type XML. So we need to pass this content up, otherwise it will be it will be form data. And I will just grab the whole string. <coughs> and then we have the SOAP action header. We take these two and we copy the whole string. Also have the headers. Now I have to choose a HTTP method and this is a post. And I will also store the response from the server. I will store it into conversion result. Okay. And then I will add another action to test the response and I will call it display message. And I will put my token here. 
So this is actually the token created by the previous action, which is the server request. Yeah. And I can also put some strings here to, to help me convert to Fahrenheit and this one to say display. Okay, so I'm saving this. And now it's time to test it. So I'll go back to the front end. Let me delete this one. Okay, so let's say I want to convert 30 degrees Celsius and it gives me 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is the response from the server, but actually this should be an XML. And if I look at the source, you can see that it's actually the whole response soap soap body and so on but what i want to extract is just this 86 number so i don't want this whole xml here which is probably not valid in this uh, html so to do this we have a new set of actions that are called parsers and right now we only have one parser and that is the regex parser so now I need to make sure that this action happens between getting the response from the server and displaying it on the front end. And in this regex action, I give it an input and here I will give it the token generated by this action. And then I will say what data to parse and where to store it. So uh, here I, I, um, I store it in a different, uh, different token. I'll just call this other one conversion result XML and I'll use it as input here and I will generate I will store it in the conversion result token and now I need a pattern so I uh, you you have to be familiar a little bit with regex to get the correct pattern for example what I will do here I will match by this tag name so I'll say something like that and here I want to extract I want to extract um, actually a number so uh, backslash backslash D means uh, a number a digit any number of time and this uh, will know to extract the, the this pattern because I put it between the brackets. Okay, so I think the correct token is already in here. Yes, so let's test this. Now it seems I didn't get it right. Let me check it again. Okay, now it's okay. I had an extra backslash. So now if I look at the source code, you see I only have 86 here. So the whole XML is gonna just extracted a specific pattern, in this case, the number. And this is how I did it with SOAP 1.1. And now I will go back and also try to do it with SOAP 1.2. So I think the difference is very small. I will just instead of having the SOAP action header, I, I will have this content type. And then uh, probably this XML is also a little bit different. Yeah, the namespace is a little bit different. So let me do it real quick. And actually, I could make another button. And I will call it convert. SOAP 1.2 so I can test both of them side by side if needed ok 
Okay, so I have this um, server request, and I will just copy from the from this other one. At least the URL. Okay, I will grab the message from here. And I will copy the token name for for passing the degrees in Celsius. And I have to append my headers, which in this case I only need the content type header. And it's a post. And I will store this. I can use the same uh, token since uh, you either click on one of the button or the other, so there will be no no conflicts between the token names. Okay, and then I will add another action for the parsing for the parsing. And I will use this pattern okay and now finally I want to display this message this conversion result Okay, let's save it and see it also in action with SOAP 1.2. One, 1 okay, looks like an error. Let me check it back real quick. Uh, I had to do a, a minor adjustment for SOAP 1.2, but now it will also work. So make sure to have build 39. And now it works both with SOAP 1.1 and SOAP 1.2. So this is it. Using this uh, this technique, you can actually communicate, use, in integrate with any type of technology that uses this kind of XMLs. Action form will actually look at the header. So if it's application SOAP that XML, and this was the problem earlier, it wasn't handled properly. Or if it's an text slash XML or a application slash xml then it will pass this xml as, as it is because otherwise is if it's form data it will try to format it as form data and uh, this xml if it didn't have the proper content type it would it would fail on encoding so it, what uh, what would actually look like is that like this one the application uh, form encoded and this is the default, default content type when doing a post and you see this is the connection, the uh, parameter strings. So what uh, action form will try to do, will try to take each line and append it uh, like this, name equals value and uh, ampersand between all the variables, which would not work in this case. So that's it. I will push, I'll put the links in the video description. Thank you for your time.